me again, uh, carrying on with the couple of short videos to lay the groundwork for a conference. I'm going to be having this next week. We're going to talk about the differences in construction of civilian versus military kilts. Now, here's a civilian kilt. Um, one immediate um, characteristic is a top band that is of the same cloth as the kilt, and it's carefully fitted to, to match. This one doesn't perfectly line up because there's little differences along the length of the cloth because it's a natural fabric. So when you put this on, it takes time to find the right fabric to, to sew it in place. Um, the second characteristic is when we're making a kilt, a civilian kilt, each one is a one-off. We don't make them off the rack. The Army does that. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, we lay out the whole cloth, we mark the aprons at each end, we make allowances for the deep pleats, if we have deep pleats, there's some kill makers that don't do it, it's a nasty little way to save a bit of cloth, and then, having determined the number of pleats and the width, we do a little bit of mathematics, actually wrong, arithmetic, to determine the width of each pleat at the waist and to the hip. All of that takes time. A military kilt, on the other hand, has a plain top band. This one isn't an original. This is a Cameron Highlanders kilt from the 1920s. As you can see, it's suffering some wear and tear, but originally its top band would have been a green uh, wool um, ribbon. But it has a plain top band, which is much less time consuming to apply, and the pleats are always standard. The, and I believe the way this was, if I remember my own apprenticeship, was that a, an apprentice could do this work because this didn't change from kilt to kilt. And you see the same thing here with this very old Seaforth kilt, which is about the same age, that the pleats are constant. There's a slight increase along the width. And in fact, if we went through this pile of Seaforth kilts behind me, I think we would find that it's the same each time. In this case, it goes from 3 8 to a half inch. And that means this is a far quicker process because this doesn't change. It's much less time consuming because you don't have to sit there and do the numbers and then double check them. This is all the same. Where we get the tailored aspect is in the A line. In the military kilts, the A line is far more dramatic. So this remains a constant. This is where we ret this is where we get our actual fitting. So there's the there's the two main differences. The um, yeah, by, by, by making army kilts to that civilian way of all of that extra attention to detail of measuring the pleats and everything else isn't best practice. It's a slower, more expensive time process than doing it in the style of uniform pleats, dramatic A-line.